So I've always had this hopeful, almost romantic view of the world with respect to climate change. And I've always thought as things get worse, human beings are going to be forced to come together. Like it or not, you're going to have to acknowledge that we all have a common interest in saving this planet and maintaining the habitability of this planet. So even if you see the others as your enemy or your rival, like it or not, you've got to work with them. But unfortunately, I'm realizing how naive that vision was, especially after seeing headlines like this. Quote, this is where the first climate wars will break out. Military strategists are now preparing for imminent warfare sparked by the effects of climate change. Yeah. So uh, if there's any aliens that have discovered us and you're more intelligent and, you know, you have just been waiting for the right time to intervene, I mean, we're on the verge of killing ourselves, quite literally, so now would be a really good time to intervene. So we're going to get into the article here, and they do describe how the climate change crisis is going to lead to increased tensions. And part of the issue is this designation of climate change as a national security threat. Now, at face value, it makes sense because climate change is a threat that's akin to a foreign invader, right? We're looking at portions of the United States that will succumb to the ocean, in a way that, you know, other countries take territory from others. I mean, how is this any different? Our resources are at threat. Our populations are vulnerable. So, of course, it makes sense to think of climate change as a national security threat. But that designation is actually very, very problematic. But let's get to the article here. So this is from Mike Pearl of the Daily Beast, who explains climate related warfare is a near term reality, not some far off boogeyman, according to leading defense thinkers and military strategists. They are still talking about the importance of fighting climate change, but they're also making plans to fight other human beings because of climate change. So where will these climate related battles take place? Some people argue they already have with controversial academic reports claiming recent conflicts were directly spurred by the effects of climate change. Other military advisors and strategists have identified specific new wars that could erupt in Asia, Africa, or the Arctic. The Atlantic Council and American think tank suggested in March that as Russia and China look to new shipping routes through previously frozen, impassable waters around Greenland, Iceland, and the Arctic Circle, there could be a new era of great power competition in the region. Britain and the U.S. have responded to a huge increase in Russian and Chinese activity in the area with a beefed-up military and naval presence, of course. An American aircraft carrier recently ventured into the Arctic Circle for the first time since the end of the Cold War. Matthew Rendell, a lecturer at the University of Nottingham, whose research focuses on climate change and international relations, argues that it is more likely that less stable, more disaster-prone places like Syria or Somalia will become the climate battlefields. Quote, they are already hot. Most of them are also a lot poorer. As a result, they're more likely to suffer acute resource shortages, mass migration of refugees, and political instability. Moreover, Rendell said, China and Russia have nuclear weapons. They may quarrel over the Arctic, but they are unlikely to fight World War III over it. That would just be too costly. Oh, well, thank God. That's a relief. I mean, World War III would be terrible, but just, you know, a bunch of different conflicts scattered throughout the world perpetually, possibly. Definitely a relief. Now, um, the issue, aside from the conflict itself, of course, which in and of itself is bad, is that, you know, if climate change is going to lead to more conflicts and conflicts will become a more common phenomenon as a result of climate change that of course is going to lead to bigger militaries more militarization globally speaking and if there's one thing we know at least with regard to the u.s military it's that the u.s military emits more co2 than many industrialized nations so we have the united states with a military that emits more co2 than Lots and lots of countries. But if a bunch of countries now start militarizing even halfway to the point where we're at currently, then that means more CO2. So I decided to hand draw an image that kind of demonstrates this cycle of death that we've put ourselves in. So as you can see, climate change creates conflict, which in turn leads to bigger militaries, which then leads to more CO2 emissions, which worsens climate change, which then creates conflict. Uh, I mean, do you see the issue here? It's a death spiral. And the only question is, what's going to kill us first, climate change or war? Now, I want to go back to the beginning of the video where I talked about climate change as a national security threat. 
And we need to really look into that and what the United States government says that that means. Because to us individually, we can think about it in a certain way, but the way that we view climate change as a national security threat is not the way that the United States government and the Department of Defense views climate change as a national security threat. Now, in the Department of Defense's lengthy climate adaptation plan, they do, in fact, identify climate change as a national security threat. And... Yes, that's technically accurate, but it's not like they view it as a threat in the sense that it's akin to a foreign invader threatening to annex South Florida. It's viewed in the sense that it threatens military operations and makes us less capable of dealing with foreign threats if we don't adapt. So it's not a national security threat in that it's going to lead to, you know, our population being vulnerable because of food shortages and, you know, extreme weather conditions. It's a national security threat in the sense that it makes us less ready militarily. It makes, it makes us less capable of effectively doing war and killing others. I mean, uh, there's also food and water shortages, which they cite as a reason to expect more terrorism and cyber attacks. And countries, more generally speaking, not just the U.S., are viewing climate change as a national security threat insofar as it's going to make them less effective in combat. And more on this, as John Kerry, special presidential envoy for climate, tweeted shortly after the election of Joe Biden, America will soon have a government that treats the climate crisis as the urgent national security threat that it is. Corey, the university leads professor, said that Kerry's tweet was an example of climate securitization, which he defined as making something understood through the lens of security. Corey questioned this approach, asking why is it national security and not human security or an ecological security crisis? The military strategies being generated to confront these new issues focus on adapting to the new challenges, not massively reducing their own carbon footprints. The Pentagon's climate change plan does talk about reducing greenhouse gas emissions, but mitigation is third on the plan's list of guiding terms after adaptation and resilience. If the rich countries, the chief causers of global warming, start pouring money into their national security apparatus instead of decarbonization and helping vulnerable countries adapt, it will add insult to injury, Corey said. So understand, whenever a Democrat and liberals say that climate change is a national security threat, they don't mean that it's a national security threat and we have to stop climate change. They mean climate change is a threat because it's going to hinder their military exercises, which they will continue and likely ramp up as a result of climate change, which will cause more conflict. Again, we'll put up the death spiral uh, circle that I drew because I'm very proud of it because I think that it represents the situation um, absolutely perfectly, unfortunately. So, you know, I, I think that now we just need to be a little bit more cautious. Whenever we see someone say climate change is a national security threat, we have to ask them what they mean by that because it's probably not going to mean what we hope it means. It means... We don't want to be more uh, or less effective, rather, at killing people. We want to be as effective as ever. We want to be combat ready. And, you know, even if there's climate change, we're still going to make sure that we have the biggest, baddest military that is fully capable of going anywhere to kill people if need be. That's not what we should be doing currently. We should all be scrambling to find a way to save the planet. But unfortunately, we're just expecting climate change to be catastrophic and they're thinking of ways to deal with that rather than just stopping that. They're just accepting it as an inevitability and not trying to mitigate it further. It's um, certainly a little bit depressing to think about it that way, but it's important that we know about this because no more applauding for liberals when they say climate change is a national security threat. That should get your red flags up because it doesn't mean what you think it means.